Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. In this video, we're going to review the Sony ZF9, also marketed as the Z9F in the USA. This is the 75-inch version, model number KD75ZF9, but it also comes in a smaller screen size of 65 inches. Alongside the AF9 OLED, the Bravia ZF9 comes under Sony's Master Series umbrella, which signifies the Japanese brand's top-tier televisions that are supposed to provide a closer match to Sony's own BBM X300 reference mastering monitor than ever before. Let's see if the ZF9 is up to task. Design-wise, it's fairly similar to the XF90 we reviewed earlier this year, with the supporting feet located at both ends of the display. So if you are not planning to wall mount the ZF9, or don't want to put the TV on the floor, you'll have to purchase a wider AV furniture on which to place the television. Like the XF90, you can invert the feet to point inwards to save some space. But to be honest, the footprint is still fairly large due to the sheer size of this 75-inch television. So I prefer to leave the feet pointing outwards. The chassis itself is reasonably thick owing to direct lit LED backlighting, sporting a textured black surface and a Bravia logo on the top left corner. There's an illuminated Sony logo at the bottom middle of the TV. You can choose to turn off the LED illumination from the user menu. Cable management is very well thought out. There are grooves behind the supporting feet to route your cables to the television to maintain a tidy look from the front and additional panel covers to keep it clean around the back too. Four HDMI inputs are available on the Sony KD75ZF9, all of which are full bandwidth 18 gigabits per second HDMI 2.0b ports that can pass UHD HDR videos at higher bit depth, chroma or frame rate. In addition, HDMI input 3 supports the EARC or enhanced ARC format so you can enjoy lossless audio codecs such as Dolby Atmos through the audio return channel. The supplied remote control is functional but nothing to shout home about. Before I move on to talk about picture quality, I'd like to thank UK AV retailer Richard Sounds for sponsoring this video. I work closely with the team at my local branch which is Deansgate Manchester. They are knowledgeable and passionate about AV products and have been kind enough to let me test certain aspects of their in-store televisions long after I've returned the review sample to the manufacturer. So if you are thinking about buying a new television, even if it's not this Sony ZF9, please consider buying from Richard Sounds to support this channel. Call 0333 900 0086, mention HDTV Test, and they'll take care of you with great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Okay, the Sony ZF9 uses a VA type LCD panel, as you can see from a macro shot of its subpixel structure here. However, subjectively and objectively, the black level isn't as deep as VA panels we've encountered in the past. On a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern with local dimming disabled and peak white packed to 120 nits, the native black level on our 75ZF9 review sample measured 0.07 nits. With a good VA panel, we would expect the figure to be around 0.03 nits. The reason why native blacks are elevated on the ZF9 is because Sony has decided to install an optical layer to increase the TV's viewing angle. This is marketed by the company as X wide angle. First, let us just say that from the viewing angle standpoint, the improvement is outstanding. The Sony ZF9 or Z9F maintains its color fidelity of axis, especially in HDR, better than any other VA panel we've tested to date. And unlike some IPS LCD panels, the blacks don't really glow up like a Christmas tree when watched from the sides. Of course, you still can't beat OLED for viewing angles since it's self-emissive, but as far as LCDs are concerned, the ZF9 is right up there. Now, I know many video files among you will say, but Vincent, I only sit directly in front of the television, so wider viewing angles are useless to me. And to a certain extent, I agree. But the viewing angles of some VA LCD TVs in the past are so narrow, notorious ones being the Panasonic CX802 and DX902 series, that if you sit close enough to the television, 
the left and right edges would actually glow brighter and there may be near black gamma shift as well so you'll see more shadow detail on the sides than the middle. By improving the viewing angles, the colorimetry of the Bravia ZF9 is more stable across the entire screen and maybe that's what Sony had in mind when designing this Master Series TV to match the reference picture put out by the Sony BVM-X300 mastering monitor. However, increasing the viewing angle comes at a great price and that's by sacrificing black level and contrast. Although not 100% technically correct, here's one simplified explanation I made up myself. LCDs achieve black by blocking light, by twisting the liquid crystal. The more focused you can make the light path, the deeper the blacks and the less blooming you'll see. That's the reason the Sony ZD9 or Z9D was so good at this, thanks to the calibrated beam LED design of Backlight Master Drive. With the ZF9, Sony has gone the other way. To improve viewing angles, the engineers had to widen the light path using the optical filter, causing more light diffusion, hence the raised blacks and increased blooming. You can actually see the optical layer, manifested by these vertical stripes if light catches the screen in a certain way. I've tried to take a video of this phenomenon, but I'm not sure how well it'll turn out on YouTube. Right, so with local dimming disabled, native blacks are 0.07 nits, but if you engage local dimming with the correct setting, this can be lowered to 0.028 nits measured on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern. Now, some of you will ask, so what's the problem here, Vincent? Isn't that equivalent to a normal VA LCD panel with 0.03 nits? And local dimming should always be enabled on the ZF9 anyway. The answer, unfortunately, is not so simple because, you see, when colors are painted on screen, Local dimming cannot be applied to these colors all the time, so the native black level of 0.07 nits will always have to be added onto the picture. In HDR, the situation is even worse. With backlight at maximum in HDR mode, blacks measured at least 0.15 nits, and this 0.15 nits will have to be added onto every single element on screen if local dimming cannot be deployed to shut down the LEDs to create pure black. This can potentially wash out the HDR picture, but we'll talk about that later in this review. Back to the local dimming. And yes, the Sony ZF9 is a direct lead LED LCD TV with full array local dimming or FALD backlight technology. We ran our own custom author test pattern consisting a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background and counted 16 vertical columns and 18 horizontal rows giving us a total of 288 independently dimmable zones. To put this figure into perspective, the 75-inch Samsung Q9FN QLED has 480 zones, while the 75-inch ZD9 has around 800 zones. Before you get too disappointed, zone count is only half the story. How the zones are controlled is equally, if not more important to the final outcome, and Sony's local dimming algorithm is the best in the business, delivering luminous stability, detail preservation, and halo suppression that are not matched by LED LCDs from any other TV brand. For example, in this scene from the 4K Blu-ray of Pan as the ship goes through a dark cave into a brighter area, the Samsung Q900R 8K QLED, which I had a first look of some time ago, exhibited distracting backlight fluctuations, but the Sony ZF9 is entirely stable with controlled finesse, and the same can be said for most scenes we watched. Of course, look hard enough and you may be able to see a delayed dimming effect as one area on screen cuts from bright to dark, for example in the sequence from The Greatest Showman, but it's subtle and shouldn't bother most viewers. Next, color fidelity and our Bravia ZF9 review unit is the most accurate Sony TV we've tested so far, thanks partly to the autocal functionality developed in partnership with Portrait Displays who sells the Kalman calibration software we use to calibrate our TVs all the time. One thing I forgot to mention in my review of the Sony AF9 OLED is that originally you only have access to 10-point white balance controls on the television, but after installing the Kalman for Bravia app on the AF9 or ZF9, then syncing with Kalman software, this is expanded to 20-point white balance controls, allowing for more finesse and granularity. This is so, so important 
because Sony's SDR calibration is designed to be eventually mapped to HDR10 and Dolby Vision. It is imperative that the grayscale is calibrated to be as tight as possible, especially with the help of AutoCal. As you can see from this challenging color checker SG chart, None of the 140 measured color patches exhibited inaccuracies above the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3, with an average error of only 0.63, maximum error of less than 2. And this result is achieved by only calibrating grayscale using AutoCal. We didn't even need to touch the newly added CMS or color management system. So very well done to Sony. That's just outstanding color science. In the past, We've only seen this level of color accuracy from Panasonic. Now we can add Sony to the ranks, which means that whatever content you watch, colors, including skin tones, will look just like how the director intended, befitting the Master Series moniker. Another aspect that we really like about our Sony ZF9 or Z9F review sample is its screen uniformity. It's just incredibly clean without any bending or dirty screen effect as we cycle through full field gray slides. In case you're wondering about the horizontal bands, those are the FALD grids captured by my camera. They are totally invisible in real life viewing. And this fantastic screen homogeneity extends to the darker end of the picture too. So unlike OLED, you won't see any thin vertical streaks on 1% to 5% above black slides. It's just an impressively clean panel, making it a joy to watch fast action sports since there's no bending or DSE during pans across a uniform background. Although the default motion flow and film mode combination in custom picture mode still causes intermittent starter with certain UK TV broadcasts, this can be eradicated by adjusting the settings, and once set up correctly, motion processing is top-notch, delivering smoothness and clarity without significant opera effect or interpolation artifacts. Video processing is excellent too. Upscaling is best in class. Smooth gradation works a treat to lessen in-content posterization. And compression artifacts in bit-starved content are suppressed more effectively than seen on rival TV brands. For HDR, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage measured 97%, and peak brightness reached nearly 1,900 nits on a 10% window after calibration, which will give bright HDR scenes stunning impact. For example, this desert chase sequence from Mad Max Fury Road. It is when the scene is mid-bright or dark that the reduced dimming zones and the elevated black level on the Sony ZF9 rear their ugly heads, but I'll cover them in my wrap-up later on in this review. It's going to be the mother of all wrap-ups. With game mode enabled, input lag measured 23 milliseconds in 4K HDR mode and 26 milliseconds in 1080p SDR mode. These figures are an improvement over the Sony Z9 and other Sony televisions in the past, except maybe for the AF9. And with a peak brightness of 1,900 nits and also no ABL restrictions, also there's no risk of image retention or permanent screen burn, so HDR games will look really fantastic and you can game for hours to your heart's content without having to worry about damaging your television. And let me just try and sum up you know, my thoughts about this television because I think I missed out a good chunk of the HDR portion because I really wanted to sum it all up to deal with the cinema scope bars glowing and also the blooming artifacts issue that are caused by a combination of both the reduced local dimming zones and also a higher black level compared with let's say the Sony ZD9. Now I think when you're talking about blooming and also the top and bottom letterbox bars glowing especially when watched in the dark room I don't think you need to worry when you're actually watching SDR. I put on gravity and I compared side by side with a uh, top line 2018 OLED television. And once the TV is calibrated to a suitable SDR level for viewing in a pitch black room, I don't really see any significant top and bottom letterbox bar glowing that would actually concern me. And the black level looked, it's not going to be as black as the OLED that can turn off every pixel individually, but it's close. And the bonus is that the LED LCD 
this Sony ZF9 will be able to show more shadow detail than any OLEDs out there including the AF9 because of just how deep the blacks are on the OLED they can sometimes swallow up the shadow detail but there is no such problem on the Sony ZF9 and Sony again has designed their local dimming algorithm to be not as aggressive as let's say Samsung's Q9FN QLED television because in Samsung's effort to try and combat blooming, they are using the local dimming in an aggressive manner which may lead to some crushed shadow detail. But there is no such problem on the Sony ZF9, so shadow detailing is first rate. But it is when it comes to HDR that the Sony ZF9 may present a problem for those of you who are watching in a pitch black room. So I would always strongly recommend that you use some sort of dim bias lighting to try and mitigate this. Because when you display HDR content on screen, the backlight will have to go to maximum to adhere to the ST2084 PQEOTF curve and therefore the backlight of maximum will result in a black level of 0.15 nits as I showed you earlier. And this 0.15 nits will be added to whatever content that you're actually watching on screen. And therefore, you will have to put up with a slightly washed out effect. Especially in low APL scenes, I'm showing a scene from the Matrix here. It's not a full representation because my camera just doesn't have enough dynamic range to capture the whole difference between this and an OLED. But you know, the OLED, by virtue of being able to switch off every pixel, and this LED LCD, because its native black level in HDR mode is around 0.15 nits, the blacks will look fairly grey and it just loses that impact, it just loses that depth that OLED and the previous Sony ZD9 can bring. Even in mid-tone scenes, you know, with sort of an average level of brightness, you can see some effect of the really high black level really impacting on the picture, especially in CinemaScope movies. The top and bottom letterbox bars, they are not inky black and it will actually be distracting, depending on you know how sensitive you are to non-black CinemaScope bars and blooming artifacts, especially when there's an object that veers very close to the CinemaScope bars, there'll be some blooming near the bright object. For example, in this scene from Batman vs Superman. So that is CinemaScope movies, but if you actually turn your attention to Netflix where some movies, they have top and bottom black bars, but the black bars are fairly narrow and your eyes are generally focused in the middle of the screen. So when I watch Dolby Vision content on Netflix, you know, I'm generally very happy with the picture performance. And one thing to note is that on Netflix, if you actually bring up the UI, it seems to disable all sort of local dimming and so you may see more clouding and blooming so to make a proper judgment of the Netflix programs you will have to make sure that the UI is entirely out of the way then the local dimming would set in properly allowing you to assess the true local dimming performance of the television on Netflix. Now when it comes to Dolby Vision as well, I think when I played the Matrix, particularly the scene from the Oppo 203 connected to the Sony ZF9, there's still elevated black level when the scene cuts to black, but the elevated black level is not actually present when you display HDR10 content. And sometimes it is difficult for me to tell whether the elevated black level is caused by the native black level that is being raised by the optical layer or is caused by the Dolby Vision mismatch that presumably you know, still needs to be fixed on the Oppo 203 or the Sony ZF9. I need to talk a bit about the dynamic tone mapping on the Sony ZF9 if it's even present because from the effects that I see, this TV can resolve up to 5000 nits and even above, but the dynamic tone mapping effect is not as obvious as on the Sony AF9 OLED, probably because this TV with 1900 nits of peak brightness just have enough headroom to actually allow the detail in between to be expressed properly without resorting to tone mapping and so I think Sony designed the dynamic tone mapping on this TV, if it's even present at all, to be not as aggressive as on the AF9. So let's wrap up this really long wrap up and I think many of you will be asking me whether this TV is a worthy successor to the Sony ZD9 and my answer would be not quite. 
Now let me clarify what do I mean by that. First of all, I want to say that I love the color accuracy of the set. I love the screen uniformity and I love that it has like four full band with HDMI 2.0b ports for you to connect all your different devices, 4K HDR devices. And also, I like the fact that the Android UI is now so speedy, making it a joy to go in and out of the menu. But if you have seen my previous review videos of the Hisense NU9700 and also maybe the Samsung 65-inch Q9FN, you know that I don't like to go soft on anyone, ever. And unfortunately, I think Sony has made a misjudgment when trying to increase the viewing angle of the Sony ZF9 at the expense of black level and contrast, which is the number one attribute of picture quality. It depends on your expectations. You know, for example, you know, I previously was reviewing a Sony projector and when I returned to watch HDR content on the set, I thought that it looked actually fairly good because HDR on projectors is generally underwhelming and when you come to this set, I was taken in by the HDR impact that is delivered by bright scenes, especially on Netflix Dolby Vision on this television. But when I came to watch Cinemascope movies with top and bottom letterbox bars in films, the grayness and the blooming just takes me out of the experience, however much I try to actually tune them out in a pitch black room. Obviously with some bias lighting it can mitigate it a bit but you know again the elevated black level of 0.15 when you add it to the colors it will create this washed out effect which is unavoidable even in let's say medium APL scenes. Now for bright scenes the HDR impact is fantastic. When I watched Mad Max Fury Road, when I watched let's say Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the impact, the realism, the naturalness, the sun, you know, the reflections bouncing off the chrome on the vehicle grill, they all just sparkle with that sort of intensity that I can never get on an OLED and for that I'm thankful. But I just wished that Sony has stuck to the design of the ZD9 in terms of the calibrated beam backlight master drive to try and give us a deeper black level with less blooming in combination with this really high fantastic peak brightness. I'm a high peak brightness whore, don't get me wrong, you know, I love OLED but I love brightness as well, you know, I love that punch that you actually get in your face when you see reflections, when you see sunlight bouncing off the waves, things like that, you know, they just give such a three-dimensional depth to the picture and for that, you know, I'm thankful. 1,900 nits of peak brightness and the local dimming algorithm is designed such that you know in real life content this level of peak brightness can largely be translated to brighter elements on screen. I have no complaints about that. But it is at the darker end of the picture that I feel that in hindsight, again it's all in hindsight isn't it, that you know the Sony ZD9 with the calibrated beam backlight master drive technology is just so so impressive you know it can almost rival OLED. I don't know how Sony arrived at this conclusion to decide to design a TV that has wider viewing angle but sacrifice the black level. Maybe they employed a focus group, asked a few people some questions and what the major weakness of the Sony ZD9 is and all of them will probably say narrow viewing angles and therefore they decided to tackle this problem in an effort to appeal to more people. But the fact of the matter is, an LCD is an LCD. The basic principle remains the same. If you want to make it black, you need to control the light spillage, the diffusion. And by not doing that, by actually putting this optical filter to widen the viewing angle, you raise the black level, you create more blooming. And it is really unfortunate. I really want to like this television. I love the color accuracy, I love the screen uniformity, I love the high peak brightness, but in HDR content, specifically in HDR content, SDR I have no complaints. SDR, this is reference quality, shadow detailing, the top and bottom letterbox bars don't really glow as bright if you actually set the peak white to be suitable for viewing in a pitch black room. I have no complaints there. But it is in HDR when watching a cinema scope movie, top and bottom letterbox bars, they glow brighter, blooming when there's a bright object on screen, it actually seeps into the letterbox bars. Those are distracting to me and in low light and also probably medium APL scenes, 
there is a slight washed out effect that is caused by this elevated black level of 0.15 nits. So yes, who is this television for? I think, you know, if you watch sports in a bright room, this is my top choice because of the combination of the motion handling and also the screen uniformity that doesn't have any dirty screen effect or DSE, making sports a joy really to watch on this television. So if you watch sports, and if you are a heavy gamer, the input lag is low enough. It's not the lowest, but it is low enough to compete with the likes of LG and Panasonic. And also you get this really impactful HDR that is not restricted by any ABL. So from that point of view, gamers should be very happy with this TV. But if you are a video enthusiast who only watch in a pitch black room and want, you know, totally non-distracting cinema scope bars and also zero blooming, then OLED may be the better choice for you, maybe the AF9. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.